keep it real with you. Can I keep it real with you? Hmm? Can I keep it real with you? One time for the one time. One time for the one time. Keeping it real with you. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. Uh, how real we gonna keep it, huh? How real are we gonna keep it? How real are we going to keep it? Hmm, that is the question of the day, sir. Oh boy, I guess I'm gonna have to really keep it real with y'all today, man. I'm just trying to find the, the section, then I'm, I'm gonna get to it. Peace, peace, peace. What's happening with you? Mommy Salam, man, keeping it real with you. Um, yeah, so I. I think I just found it one second. Yeah, right there. Justice. Right there with sincerity. Boom. So, peace, peace, peace. So, I was reading. I was reading my. It's real beat up, but the Mysteries of the Silent Brotherhood of the East book. And um, I was like, man, I, I kind of wanted to read this story because um, it's, it's powerful to me. Um, but it, <laughs> the lesson, the lesson at the end of it is sincerity. And I was like, well, damn, you probably need to be sincere <laughs> in order for people to really connect with it. So then I was like, well, what can I be sincere on? And I was like, ah, it's, it's been something that's been kind of eating away at me. And I said, well, I guess today is the day I'm going to talk about it. So here we are. Um, here's the thing, man. Like, once you know about this stuff, once you know about love, true peace, freedom, and justice, and you, you say this is what you want, you know, now you're accountable. Once you know, see, that's the thing. Ignorance is bliss. That's half the statement. Ignorance is bliss until you know. Once you know it, Ignorance ain't bliss because you you know you're not ignorant. You can't even fake it. You can pretend to everybody else, but inside it'll eat away at you because you know. And so if you're not living right, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you know, you know. And uh, so here's the thing. You know, I was out with a young lady, and. Uh, uh, well, let me backtrack, backtrack. Seen a young lady. Very beautiful. I said, hey. My name is said, nah, do you have a man? She said, yes. I said, ah, oh, I hide peace. She doubled back. She said, well, we can be friends. I said, hmm. All right, I'm a roll. I'm, I, can, I can do this. I'm righteous enough. I can, we're going to be friends. Things started to get a little bit, you know what I mean, murky, a little gray area. Now, she said the situation with her boyfriend was about over, but it still was, you know. Started eating away at me, because I'm like, man, this is not, this is not right. And then I was like, ah, this right here, so I'm going to read this part to you then. in a chapter called Justice, by the way. 31. The peace of society dependeth on justice, the happiness of individuals on the safe enjoyment of all their possessions. Keep, this, keep the desires of thy heart, therefore, within the bounds of moderation. Mm. And I got that part highlighted. You feel me? <laughs> Let the hand of justice lead them aright. Cast not an evil eye on the goods of thy neighbor. Let whatever is his property be sacred from thy touch. Okay, right. Let no temptation allure thee. Ah, oh, come on, man. 
nor any provocation excite thee to lift up thy hand to the hazard of his life. Defame him not in his character, bear no false witness against him. Here we come, here we go. Corrupt not his servant to create or forsake him, and the wife of his heart or his bosom, O tempt not to sin. Now, now granted, granted, people, feel me. You know, they weren't married, but still, because the next line is line number seven. It will be a grief to his heart, which thou cannot relieve, an injury to his life, which no reparation can atone. Whoosh. Come on, man. Come on, man. What do you do? <sighs> Anyways. Uh, and this, oh, let me get to this other chapter. This is uh, chapter 34. Sincerity. Coming back around to sincerity. The tongue of sincere, the tongue of the sincere is rooted in heart. Hypocrisy and deceit have no place in his words. He blusheth at, at falsehood and is founded, but in speaking, speaking in truth, but in speaking the truth, he hath a steady eye. He supporteth as a man the dignity of his character to the arts of hypocrisy. He scorneth not; he scorned to stoop. He is consistent with himself. He is never embarrassed. He hath courage enough for truth. But to lie, he is afraid. Um, man. Yeah. You can read the rest of them, both of them chapters. Powerful stuff. But back to the story. Those lines kept, you know what I mean, just kept playing in mind. It'd be a grief to his heart. You can't repair that. I'm like, ah. So, uh, so I, I stepped away from that situation. Um, but. That brings me all the way back around to this chapter. Let me read this story because it's uh, it's powerful. And I told you that story, one, to be sincere, and also because um, in that moment, I was just thinking to myself, man, I'm going to be a real hypocrite. You know what I mean? Like, I can't be talking about love, true peace, freedom, and justice, and we need to be righteous, and we need to be doing this, and then I'm doing, you know what I mean? Not to say I'm perfect or, you know, that I, I don't make mistakes, because I do, but the biggest thing is once you, like, once you know and you hear that voice inside telling you, you know, you know this ain't the right thing to do, you can't ignore that voice, man. You can't ignore that voice, but... Let me read this real quick. <clears throat> yeah, well. Yahshua, this is chapter 14. Yahshua receives the mystic name and number and passed the first brotherhood test. The master took down from a, from the wall a scroll on which, on which was written down the number and name of every attribute character, and character. And he said, the circle is the symbol of the perfect man, and the seven is the number of the perfect man. The logos is the perfect word, that which creates, that which destroys, and that which saves. This Hebrew master is the logos of the Holy One, the circle of the human race the seven of the time. And in the record book, the scribe wrote down the Logos Circle Seven, and thus was Joshua known. Joshua, a.k.a. Jesus. Upon the Jesus was a young man. The master said, the Logos will give heed to what I say. No man can enter the light, can enter light till he has found himself. Go forth and search till you have found your soul and then return. The guide led Yahshua to a room in which the light was faint and mellow like the light of early dawn. The chamber walls were marked with mystic signs, the hieroglyphs and sacred texts. And in the chamber, Yahshua found himself alone where he remained for many days. He read the sacred texts, thought out the meanings of the hieroglyphs and sought the sought the import of the master's charge to find himself. 
a revelation came. He got acquainted with his soul. He found himself, then he was not alone. One night he slept at a midnight hour, a door that he had not observed was opened, and a priest in somber garb came in and said, my brother, pardon me for coming in at this unseemly hour, but I have come to save your life. You are a victim of a cruel plot. The priest of the, the Helio, Heliopolis, the priests of the Heliopolis are jealous of your fame, and they have said that you will never leave these gloomy crypts alive. The high priests do not go forth to teach the world, and you are doomed to, to you are doomed to temple servitude. Now, if you would be free, you must deceive these priests. Must tell them you are here to stay for life. And then you will have gained all that you wish to gain. I will return. And by a secret way will lead you forth that you may go in peace. And Yahshua said, My brother man, why would you come here to teach deceit? Come on, man. He's like, hold up, man. Why you coming with all that? You feel me? Am I within these holy walls to learn the, wild, the, the wiles of vile hypocrisy? Nay, man, nah, man. My father scorns deceit, and I am here to do his will. Deceive these priests, not while the sun shines. <laughs> he's, kind of, he's kind of a G, like, well, man, you better get to, better go on. Go on with all that. What I have said, I have said. You hear my man talking that talk? <laughs> Deceive these priests. Not why the sun shines. What I have said, I have said. I will be true to them, to a lie, and to myself. Oh my goodness. Come on, man. Come on, man. And then the tempter left, and Yahshua was alone again, was again alone. But in a little time, a white robe priest appeared and said, Well done. The Logos has prevailed. This is the trial chamber of hypocrisy. And then he led the way. And Yahshua stood before the judgment seat, and all the brothers stood. The Hierophant came forth and laid hands on Joshua's head and placed within his hand a scroll on which was written just one, road, just one word, sincerity. And not a word was said. The guide again appeared and led the way in the spacious room, replete with everything a student craves, was Joshua bade to rest and wait. So, the moral of the story, man, you got to be true to, to yourself, be true to Allah, and be true to the people, be true to whoever you're dealing with. Um, and I was just being true to y'all, um, but hopefully you get the lesson about being sincere, not being a hypocrite, um, you know, all of that good stuff. And study this, this is the Quran, chapter 7. Hope you've got the, uh, a better understanding or a deeper understanding of the, uh, the chapter 7. Um, and this is the Italian Brotherhood of the East. Know what y'all lead. Study, study, study. I think that's it. Tap in with me. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel.